Extreme Me is the brand new all-electric motorsport championship set to launch in 2021. Although you may have seen a lot of cool promotional videos on social media or read about this new series in recent weeks, those of you that are interested will enjoy this video as we talk you through everything you need to know about the all-electric Extreme E off-road championship. My name is Katie Fairman and you are watching the Inside Electric YouTube channel. Extreme E is an all-electric series that takes eSUVs to the most remote areas of the world. Unlike other series, it's not designed to be a spectator sport, but instead plans on racing in places that no other motorsport has ever been exposed to. From deserts to oceans, glaciers, rainforests and the Arctic, the ethos of Extreme E is to race these electric machines in the places most affected by the growing global warming crisis. The series was founded by Alejandro Agag, the brainchild of Formula E. The cars themselves are designed by technology and engineering experts Spark Racing and Williams Advanced Engineering, who have helped design the car that is known as the Odyssey 21. These two also helped create the first Formula E car, so they know their way around electric motorsport. The Odyssey 21 is capable of hitting 100 km per hour, which is around 62 miles an hour, in 4.5 seconds, whilst tackling gradients of up to 130%. It also has the power of 400 kW, which is around 550 horsepower. As for drivers who want to get involved in Extreme E, the list is pretty special. From the world of Formula E, current championship leader Antonio Felix da Costa, Season 3 Formula E champion Lucas Degrassi, as well as highly regarded drivers Sam Bird, Jerome D'Ambrosio, Andre Lotterer, Daniel Apt, Oliver Turvey and Season 1 champion Nelson Piquet Jr. have all put their names down as drivers to be considered. Away from Formula E, World Rally Championship legend and six-time consecutive WRC champion Sebastian Ogier has shown an interest in addition to inaugural W Series champion Jamie Chadwick, Billy Munger, Bruno Senna and also many more have put themselves forward for this Extreme E Championship. Seriously, the talent linked to this project is ridiculous. As well as the impressive drivers program, teams and manufacturers that have linked themselves to the series is admirable. Names like HWA, APT and Andretti Motorsport, who all have experience in Formula E, have signed up for Extreme E. Other teams that are part of the series are QEV Technologies, as well as Veloce Racing. Veloce, who is more known for their esports presence and has recently brought us the viral Not The GP Racing series online, has names like two-time Formula E champion Jean-Eric Verne and legendary designer Adrian Newey as their key team personnel. Chip Ganassi Racing also confirmed their commitment to Extreme E. Joining the all-electric world for their 30th anniversary in motorsport, Chip Ganassi Racing are a powerhouse in motorsport with huge successes in championships like IndyCar, NASCAR and the FIA World Endurance Championship. Extreme E have also announced a world first in motorsport when they stated each team must have both a male and a female driver on their teams. The drivers will both have to compete in a lap of the two lap races, something never seen before in motorsport. Do you think this is a good idea? Let us know in the comments below. So, why was Extreme E created? We already have a plentitude of electric motorsport championships on the scene, from big players like Formula E, to Moto E and Project E. WRC event winner Hayden Padden even helped launch an electric rally car project last year. Well, to put it simply, a gag felt passionately that racing needed to be held in areas which are most at danger from global warming. His concept for Formula E was to race in city centres and bring electric racing to the fans. He believed that hosting in cities, as well as being more densely populated and reducing the need to get in your combustion engine cars and go to race circuits, were also areas that were most receptive to the idea of electric or hybrid cars. Their journey should be relatively short compared to those in the sticks, and their cities also have the ability to host the infrastructure needed, such as charging stations and shopping malls or in your office building. Extreme E will be the total opposite, from racing in the hive of the world's biggest cities to taking motorsport into the middle of nowhere. A gag has made it clear that Extreme E is not a spectator sport and it doesn't promote itself to be. Instead, it plans to use that to its advantage and use its broadcast to show the world what is being done to our planet through this climate crisis. So, where are these locations that the Extreme E program will be visiting? As I mentioned earlier in the video, the series has split their calendar up into five segments, which are all areas they plan to race. They are deserts, oceans, glaciers, rainforests, and the Arctic. 
the provisional 2021 calendar has these five locations sorted and are as follows. The first round will be in Lacro, Senegal. The second round is in the desert of Shiran, Saudi Arabia. The third race is in the Kaligandaki Valley in Nepal. Fourth, and the penultimate round on the inaugural calendar is Kanjaloswak in Greenland. Finally, Extremi will visit Santarim in Brazil for its rainforest round. All these races are months apart from one another to help with the transportation of the equipment the series will be using. Extremi will have a permanent residence on an ex-Royal Mail ship called the RMS St Helena. The ship is currently undergoing a huge transformation worth many millions of dollars, all to help reduce the amount of emissions she produces and cut her carbon footprint. She will not only be the series garage hub, as well as accommodation for those involved in the series, but also the main operating base for the global voyage she will undergo. Extremely have also launched their own scientific committee that consists of leading academics from the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. These four confirmed leaders of their respective fields have decades upon decades of experience between them, and they will advise a series education and research programs, events logistics and impacts, as well as recommend positive initiatives that will support the local communities they visit and leave a legacy behind. All of Extremely's journey around the globe will also be captured by Paramax Films and Titan Cinema, who are two giants in the movie and the entertainment industry. The partnership will see the all-electric SUV off-road racing championship on the silver screen in the incredible IMAX format. Because Extreme E will be racing without the aspect of entertaining fans and spectators on the ground, their standards for broadcasting and an actual race format will need to be on another level. Speaking on Nico Rosberg's Leaders for Good podcast, Agag stated how Extreme E wanted to make each broadcast like a video game, similar to that scene in the movie Tron. It was also explained by a gag that so much of the behind the scenes needed to be digital, such as the advertisement, as you can't be building massive sponsorship billboards in the middle of a rainforest. In the podcast, a gag also mentioned Hyperboost, which will be awarded to the driver who accomplishes the longest jump at the start of each race. The driver will then be awarded a speed boost, which will help them throughout the event. If you would like to know even more about Extreme E, well, you are in luck. Over on our Inside Electric podcast, we sat down and chatted exclusively to the CEO and founder of Extreme E, Alejandro Igag, all about this new all-electric championship in an in-depth look at what we can expect. If you would like to hear that, please search for our Inside Electric podcast on your chosen podcast platform, where you will also be able to find a huge selection of podcasts that we have recently recorded, including chats about the top 10 Formula E races you have to watch, our ranking of the top 25 Formula E drivers from seasons 1 to 5, and I also had an hour-long chat with Nelson Piquet Jr., who was Formula E's first champion, all about electric motorsport, but also about his time before he made Formula E. If you found this video useful, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and we will see you for another video very, very soon.